Whoa! All right, that's me! And uh, that's all the slides. Anyway, back to uh, the actual stuff. So if we head over to our Mockingbird site, uh, as we know, the Mockingbirds love nothing more than to mock uh, others like humans and so on. Um, and of course, they love to do this just like uh, humans in some ways, right? So humans love to watch birds. They like to go out and watch the birds and make fun of them the whole time, I assume, right? We're all saying nasty, snide remarks about those birds all the time. Well, the birds are no different. The birds also say those kinds of things about the humans, right? And uh, they wanted to have that represented on their internet. It's a, it's a core value to them, right? The mocking of others. Um, and so they wanted some way to be do that. Um, all right, sorry. <laughs> I got confused by Elliot's message. I was like, oh, no! Um, all right. So uh, what was I saying? So these birds, they like to mock people. They like to mock crowds, right? So how do they do that in their internet, right? They could get a video of some crowds, and then they could occasionally watch that video on a loop and make fun of it. But that's boring, right? Now, there are plenty of web parts to help make that happen. But there are complications with uh, video, right, in terms of uh, fixed sizing. It's not dynamic. You can't do some other fancy stuff should you want to and so on so they decided to make their own web park so we head on over to our mock bench all right so here we go here is a web part that they built it's a it's based on a crowd simulator demo that uh, someone else put together uh, not me right so this allows them to look at various random members of the pnp team as they walk around maybe say at a conference like the uh m365 community conference in, Ve in uh, vegas wow there you go there's a random plug for that uh, but they're walking around. And how does this work, right? And why is this important? Well, it's not important. That's the first step. But how does it work? Let's take a look at that. All right. So let's jump on over to our code to see that. All right. So as mentioned, uh, this is largely just me uh, adapting someone else's code, right? I did not attempt to say it. I will highlight it, though. That is the person. And they put together this crowd simulator. And all I did was I brought it in here. Um, and, uh, well, if you want a horse, there's a horse right there. There you go. Wow! Right, in fact, you know, but this is a Mockingbird's demo, so let's add a, uh, a bird. There we go. What a cocktail. Sounds good. Yeah, the <laughs> Obama sounds perfect. Okay, so there we go. Now the bird and horse are friends. I hope everyone's happy in the, uh, the comments there. Perfect. All right, so now we're back over here. So all I did was I adapted this uh, code pen, right, to make this work and put in some random, uh, you know, images of the PNP team. Um, and in order to do that, I could have brought in the JavaScript directly, as that is ordered in SVFX, but instead I brought it directly in here into my web part file. This is a minimal uh, web part, so no framework or anything. And I just took it here, and I added all the typing information and some interfaces and blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, it's just their code, and it's just a bunch of fancy drawing code. Uh, and the main thing it uses is something called GSAP, uh, which is a nice third-party uh, animation tool kit for you and obviously it works within spfx so that's exciting because again spfx uh, when you think about spfx sometimes we see a lot of demos and they're really great um you know and they're very focused on business needs and uh you know they've got a series of buttons and they've got some cool layouts and all that's great but the browser is capable of so much more um, and there's a lot of amazing stuff out there and luckily with spfx because it is just full-on web development you can bring a lot of those third-party type tools in here, such as this one. Wow. So if we come down here, the main thing it's really doing, uh, just for everyone that's aware, um, is calling this render function. So it's using a canvas. So this is the difference, right? We're not grabbing some, you know, a bunch of image components and moving them around on a timer job. Um, instead, we're using a canvas. Now, when you use something like a canvas uh, to draw, you can have much quicker operations. It's much faster for drawing all of these things. You can do some really, really cool stuff. In fact, there's a ton of stuff out there. I'll show you some demos of those uh, using 3D charting and all sorts of other really neat visualizations, and it's highly performant. And the other thing is when you're doing it, you can do things such as requesting an animation frame, which allows your code to work nicely with everything else that's going on. In other words, you don't just have to block the whole web page just because you decided you want a crowd walking around at the bottom, right? So all it does is it goes through here and it's got a little draw loop, right? So each of the people are called peeps and they just draw themselves. Right, and uses that GSAP to calculate um, all those fun things. And uh, as they order, there's a bunch of other ones. So Green Sock is another really great uh, animation uh, toolkit. I demoed that a few years back on a Thanksgiving. So check those out. But there's a bunch of these, right? Okay. And then the actual web part here. This is it, right? Boom. Set a put a canvas on there, and then I start the crowd, which all it does is it draws everything to the canvas and manages all that with that above code. Okay. So that's exciting. 
just wanted to show off the canvas. Now let's do another one here. Let's go back to the page here. Now, again, if you're wondering, this is that uh, thing. Let's copy that and I'll paste that in the chat for anyone that wants to see that. It's a very nice animation framework. Uh, it works pretty well. It does not, uh, actually, I can't remember if it works very well with React, but uh, GreenSock certainly does, and there's others that work really well with React or have React wrappers if you're using React. Okay. All right, and of course, if you're looking for other things that you, well, that's weird. Chris, we can't hear you if you're still talking. So, did someone mute me? Did I mute myself? All right, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. You broke me! How could you do it? All right, well, uh, I probably said some things. Um, so, I wish you'd heard them. They were really amazing nuggets of wisdom. But we don't have time to go back over those. I so, think... moving on! I think you were finished. I yeah, think perfect. Finished. Yeah, I'm all done. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's look at another web part here that we put together. All right. So let's grab it here. And it is our little Nintendo. All right. So here we have a little Nintendo. And, of course, this is the Mockingbirds. And we didn't want to get in copyright trouble, so we're using an open source ROM, which, believe it or not, those exist. Uh, so we're not going to show uh, Mario or any of those other things here. But look at that. We are actually running a Nintendo emulator inside SharePoint Framework, right? In fact, I can even play this little thing, maybe. Let's see. Ooh, my high score is two. So, um, <laughs> right, is that important? No, it's not very important. In fact, this is probably a terrible idea. Um, but the whole idea here is that you can bring in all sorts of interesting stuff, and all this is doing is using a canvas to draw all this. So let's take a look at that code. All right, let's head on over to that. Let's switch this guy so you can see that. So this one was a React web part. Did not need to be. I just like React, um, and I highly recommend it. But the idea was that you can use React with all these things as needed, right? So I've got a very small, small amount of state, right, for the button and so on. Uh, but you can see the actual Nintendo part. So the web part itself, there's nothing in here. There's nothing in the web part. It just hands it off to React. That's why I'm in the wrong one. So if we go over here, we can see down here, this is the main section of the web part, right? So it's a uh, functional component. Uh, let me go up to the top of that functional component, right? So it's just React NES, right? It's using something called Nostalgist, which is what provides that emulator in the browser, uh, which provides a nice package for us that works directly um, here inside our SharePoint framework. I just did an NPM install on the uh, the emulator. And here's where I'm managing that state, pausing it or not, right? So it's got a nice API where I can resume, pause, start. I can do screenshots. I could load in uh, saved states. I can load in multiple ROMs. There's all sorts of stuff that could be done, right? And then it's as simple as this, right? Bring it in, put a cool fancy shader on it, right? So it looks even more like a CRT and so on. All of that's possible because down here, all we're really doing is we're putting, again, a canvas. That's it. We point it to the canvas. And all of that uh, will handle all the drawing, all the input capture, um, all the sound. Everything happens for us, and all that drawing happens in the same way as the crowd simulator. We're using the canvas, which means, again, it plays nicely with our intranet. Ooh, wowee! Right? Uh, one thing I will note is that uh, there is a technique I'm using here uh, that would probably be helpful to call out. And so if you look at, like, say, a vanilla web part, right, uh, and you do it with, like, say, the React stuff, all right, you get this thing as your default component, and you'll see there's this lovely thing. Uh, one of the first things I do in almost every uh, uh, web part that I, if I don't do the minimal, or I would do the React one, I go and delete these silly welcome assets, right? But that's important. So how do you get images, right, in here, right? So that is, like, it's one thing, you've got a URL to an image, maybe you've got a, you know, a, a CDN or someplace else, and that's fantastic, you've got that. Hey, use that. But sometimes you just want to include these, right? So they've just included them here. And what they've done is they've used this require. And when they do that, those get built in and come on over. And you can do things like, uh, so if you wanted to use, say, the React or the, um, the Fluent icons, right? There's an SVG package that you can use. If you wanted to get the actual image, when you reference those locally, it's just going to be uh, 
a URL to the file system in the node modules. But when you actually compile and run this thing, they'll actually be converted to data URLs, right? But the idea is I don't care, right? I'm just going to use them. Uh, and I use this require. Now, I find this can be tedious to manage, right? Uh, especially if you're doing this thing they're doing here, which they're illustrating with the dark theme, right? They're detecting if it's a dark theme, they're passing it down as a prop. And then every time you use an image, you need to know that there is a dark and a light, right? Now, in this case, there's one image. It's not hard. Nobody needed anything else. But um, what you can do is, what I often do is I end up writing something um, a little simpler or a little something to wrap that around. Whereas I write a record of string and string, right, where I just map all these images here. In this case, I've only got one, which is that cabinet, that background image, which is not part of that canvas. The canvas is drawn on top of it, right? And how do I manage that, right? So then I, I do this, and then I can just go images.cabinet, and I can reference those. Um, in this case, I've kept it very simple, but you can get kind of crazy with it, right, where you can have the images be aware itself of dark mode, high contrast mode if you're in Teams, and so on, and picking the appropriate images for you. And then everywhere you're using images, it's very much like strings dot whatever, and you don't care about what the localization comes out to. It can be the same thing for images. Now, one of the problems with doing this is how do I use these images in my CSS directly, right? So one of the things that I have done, and you can do it too if you'd like, is I've got this overly fancy little function just because I like to copy and paste it. Uh, but you could just do it manually. And what I'm doing here is it takes all of my images and converts them into CSS variables, right, as CSS properties. So then I could then pass that way down here. I just say style equals those CSS variables on the parent, and that makes those variables available over here. So then I can say my background is as simple as doing the image cabinet. All right, so now I can reference those here. Uh, now, you know, there's nothing wrong with generating an actual image and setting the sources they've done. And in fact, you're going to do that a lot. But sometimes you want to work with, like, say, masks or background images or some of the fancier stuff inside CSS. And this is a great way to hand that off um, while still having it work through your build system and being uh, required and all that. Okay, so that's that exciting stuff about those images. That was a little side note. So let's go back to our page here, so our Mockingbirds. Um, and so what I've mentioned here is that all this stuff works nicely. Now let's see if that's actually true. Let's refresh. So here on our homepage, we've actually gone down here, and we've got our Nintendo, and we've got our crowd simulators running down here. And we even have my old uh, friend here from a, a demo a while back, the microphone, right? You'll notice here when I do this, because it is doing, it's playing nicely with the browser, this is a blocking request. This is waiting for an animation frame. So it stops everything, and the code doesn't happen, right? Uh, Again, that's how it's really powerful and won't mess up with your internet if you're using the canvas with those animation frames. Okay, so there we go. And I can say things like, this uh, has a silly cup of coffee. <laughs> right, and it can be mocked that way. And let's see if that works. I'm Chris Kent, and I say, Visa has a silly cup of coffee, blah. Oh, I spelled coffee wrong. <laughs> I don't know, I hope you guys heard it say that. But the idea is this is executing as a web part down here. This is executed as a web part up here. And even at the same time, we could have this running, right? And so now we've got our Nintendo running. Also, all on the page. Uh, everything is just working as expected. There's no real slowdown because, again, we're just using Canvas. So, wow, indeed. All right. So, Hugo, I know you've done quite a bit uh, with some of the Canvas stuff. I've pretty much finished my demo here. But if you want to talk for a couple minutes about some of the stuff you've done or some of the other areas, that'd be helpful. Yeah, uh, you know what I think what you've demonstrated, Chris, is uh, again the the richness of Canvas, but also how interactive it can be, right? Because you can pass inputs to it, and it will react uh, quickly, and that includes uh, fast frame rates and things like that. There are actual business uses to this scenario, and some of the things that I've done past, I've done a case management system where you could see the interconnectivity between cases. Uh, and I had used a, a molecule visualization, uh, you know, library that actually showed the cases as little molecules and the, the lines between the, the molecules to show how they were connected. And I was using a different size based on, you know, how related the items were and, and things like that. It allowed people to see the data in a way that they had never seen it before. Um, another cool thing that I had done in the past was a... Uh, for a college, I had done a, a 3D isometric map of 
uh, of the can the campus. So you could actually find your directions around the campus, and it it looked like those fancy uh, maps that you see in the mall. Those are all kind of scenarios that that used real time data, uh, business data, and they had really practical use. Um, and they all use Canvas behind the scene. Uh, one last one was a 3D model that basically showed the the world, and it had points on the on the the 3D world map uh, that showed you know inputs and outputs going and things like that. Uh, but I do love the 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 Super Nintendo uh, emulator. Uh, do we expect these web parts to show up in the uh, sample repos, Chris? If you want them, you can have them. Thank you.